All right, if you have a old Land Cruiser, say an 80 series, an old 70 series, maybe even an old 60 series, and you're having some starting problems, then this video is probably gonna help you. Especially if you've already checked the starter, you put a new starter on, or you've checked the starter solenoid, and you put a new one of those in maybe, and it's still not starting, this video is gonna help you a lot. All right, so let's say you've just jumped in your Land Cruiser, you go to start it, Everything comes on, nothing. You can hear it, I'm getting a click, but I'm not getting it to start. What is the problem? So basically in my case, I replaced my starter motor and it didn't fix the problem. It started a few times and usually this problem is intermittent. So basically sometimes it'll work, sometimes it doesn't. It's really random, you don't know what's going on. And um, so the starter worked for the first few times, but then it didn't work after that. Um, and basically I actually pulled the solenoid itself apart, the starter solenoid, and um, I could see that it was working and it indeed was sending power out of it. So I really couldn't figure out what, uh, what was going on. So with these older Land Cruisers, the wiring is, you know, 30 plus years old and, um, you know, it gets a whole lot of mud in there from four wheel driving, all that kind of stuff you have to you know really think well maybe there's some dirt or the wires just um just perish a little bit and basically what happens is you get a voltage drop so you're getting your full 12 volts out of the solenoid but by the time that actually runs down to your starter motor you're not getting enough voltage to actually throw the solenoid into gear in the starter and get it spinning um, so here's how you test if this is the problem you have all right so this is the uh standard um, Toyota starter solenoid and a lot of people think this is the problem and they go replacing it and it do actually doesn't fix the problem mind all the fluff here from the um, hood line falling apart but just because you're not getting it to start and you've already replaced the starter motor it doesn't necessarily mean that this is your problem so let's say you have already replaced your starter motor and you're still not having any luck the same as me and you're trying to figure out have I just been sold a dodgy starter or what's going on so you're going to need to get yourself a multimeter like this stick it on volts DC of course so down on the starter there is this little plug um, with a black and red wire going into it and that um, is the plug that goes to the small terminal on your starter motor what we need to do is figure out whether or not it's getting a full 12 volts at the starter when we're ticking it over. And you could crawl underneath the car and stick your multimeter on the small terminal, but that's too hard. Just unplug this black plug and um, stick it into uh, this side, stick it into that side of the plug and turn the key over and figure out how many volts you're getting. So I've unplugged it and now I just need to stick the multimeter in there. All right, I've got the multimeter there and um, the best way to go is to set your multimeter up around here if you can without it unplugging from the socket um, so that you can actually measure it while you turn the key. So I am going to hit the key and we'll see what it comes up as. Okay, that was eight and a half volts. So basically, we know that because it's only getting eight and a half volts, that's not enough to turn over those big starters. Um, I've already checked the solenoid. I know that's sweet. It's got a new starter. And now that I know it's only got eight and a half volts down at the starter, I know there is a voltage drop somewhere between the solenoid and the starter motor. Now, instead of going and just replacing the factory wiring, I'm going to actually leave it there um, and I'm going to run a new relay setup in parallel, just a normal relay down from, uh, down from super cheap. Nice, cheap and easy fix and we'll have it turn over in no time. Alright, so you can see I've got a Trident relay from super cheap sitting next to the factory Toyota starter um, solenoid and basically uh, one of the power sources we need for the relay is a trigger power source that is um, activated when the key turns. Now 
We've already got some wiring in the car that is going to be perfect for that and that is the starter solenoid wiring. So basically, even though that 8.5 volts going to the starter isn't enough to turn over the starter, it's still enough to um, flick the solenoid, uh, to flick the relay over. So basically, we are, have wired the, um, what was the starter motor wire going from the solenoid to the small terminal, now is powering this relay and the relay has a direct wire coming from the battery, it's fused, and then I'll run a new wire from that relay down to the starter motor, and now we're going to see if it starts. Alright, let's see if it starts. Look at that. Perfect. Alright, so there's absolutely no reason to get rid of any of the wiring on the uh, factory starter solenoid. So like I said, I've actually tapped into that starter wire that goes to the small terminal and I've just used like a T power off junction connector thing and run it to this relay. It's got an earth, it's got the trigger wire, it's got the fused wire from the battery and then the hot wire going from the relay down to the starter. Alright, so it's pretty straightforward wiring. All of these solid lines represent the um, standard wiring. Um, it doesn't technically go from the key to the starter solenoid or the starter relay, but you get it. So basically the starter relay is getting power from the key and that's how it opens. When it opens, it opens up the circuit to get the power from the battery through to the starter motor. Now this actually goes through a wiring loom and everything, but that's not the important part. Um, that goes at the starter motor. This is the wire that is losing its um, current and that is a red and black wire that's got that plug on it that I showed you earlier. So basically what I do is I get this relay here and um, I get a wire tap from this wire like I was saying. Even though it's only 8.5 volts it's enough to, to flick the, the relay. I um, tap off this wire and that'll go around to uh, there you go, uh, pin 86. Um, I've got the earth, of course, pin 85. I've got a fused um, fused wire, which I've connected um, not actually straight up to the battery, but basically that just has to be a constant power source, so wherever you want to get that from. And um, then, yeah, pin 87 is your output, which then goes back to the small terminal on the starter motor. Like I said, there's absolutely no reason to get rid of the standard wiring, keep it all on there and just run it all in parallel.